Hi, I'm Julia. Now, let me take you back to that sunny Saturday, a day that started like any other but ended up changing everything. As I pulled into my brother Ethan's driveway, a mix of excitement and nerves bubbled up inside me. It had been a while since the whole family gathered, and I was eager to see everyone, especially since I'd just landed my new job as a manager at a top marketing firm. I had come straight from picking up some last-minute supplies my old 2002 blue set-in packed with bags of chips and homemade salsa. The car wasn't much to look at, but it was mine, paid off and reliable. As I stepped out, Ethan was the first to greet me. Hey Jules, we were starting to think you bailed on us. Never, I laughed, handing him the snacks. Traffic was a nightmare. As we walked into the backyard, the smell of grilled burgers filled the air. There was Vanessa, Ethan's wife, looking like she'd just stepped out of a magazine in her summer dress and designer sunglasses. My parents waved from beside the grill, and my younger siblings, Mike and Sarah, were setting up the outdoor games. Finally, the guest of honor arrives. Vanessa called out, loud enough for the neighbors to hear. She glanced at my car parked next to their brand new SUV. Couldn't you park that relic around the block, Jules? It's killing my view. A few of my cousins chuckled, and I tried to brush it off with a smile. Well, it gets me from A to B. Oh honey, Vanessa sighed, sipping her cocktail. You really should treat yourself. You're a manager now, aren't you? Act like it. I started to respond, but Vanessa had already moved on, gathering people for a game. I stood there, her words steaming. Ethan caught my eye, his face apologetic. He shrugged, mouthing, don't let her get to you. The afternoon wore on with the usual barbecue fun. I mingled, played games, and tried to keep the mood light, but Vanessa's words nagged at me. It wasn't just about the car, it was her subtle way of reminding me where I stood in her world. Later, as we all sat down to eat, the conversation buzzed with updates on everyone's lives. I shared the news about my new job, earning congratulations and questions from family members. Vanessa, meanwhile, seemed oblivious to the bombshell I was about to drop. So, Julia, she said with a smirk, must be a big step up from your old gay ha. Huh? Hopefully, they're paying you enough to get rid of that car soon. She nudged Ethan, grinning. Before I could reply, my mom spoke up. We're all proud of Julia. She's worked hard for this. The meal continued, filled with laughter and stories, but the tension simmered beneath the surface. As the sun set and people started saying their goodbyes, I helped clean up. The weight of Vanessa's arrogance and the looming reality of Monday morning filling my thoughts. Little did she know, the tables were about to turn. Walking into the sleek glass building on Monday, my stomach flipped with nerves. First days are always nerve-wracking, but this wasn't just any first day. I was stepping into a managerial role at one of the most prestigious marketing firms in the city. The receptionist greeted me with a bright smile as I passed through the lobby. Good morning, Julia. They're ready for you upstairs. Stepping out of the elevator, I was met with a round of applause from my new team. Mr. Carter, the director, shook my hand warmly. Everyone, let's officially welcome Julia as your new project manager. The room buzzed with cheers and polite clapping, skating the faces my eyes landed on Vanessa. Her applause was slow, her smile tight. She hadn't known I was going to be her boss until this very moment. Let's catch up after this, Julia, Vanessa said, her tone a mixture of surprise and forced cheerfulness. Sure, let's do that. I replied calmly, keeping my voice professional, masking the swirl of emotions inside. As the team settled in, I took my place at the head of the conference table and outlined the morning's agenda. Vanessa's eyes remained glued to her notepad, scribbling furiously, avoiding my gaze. When the meeting wrapped up, the team dispersed, but Vanessa lingered, her steps hesitant. Julia about the barbecue. I hope there are no hard feelings, she said softly, her voice a stark contrast to her usual boldness. Vanessa, let's keep our focus on work. Personal matters stay outside these walls, I replied, offering her a polite but distant smile. Of course, you're right, she nodded, her eyes darting away, unable to fully mask her unease. Over the next few days, I dove deep into project files and performance reports. Venus's work stood out, though not for good reasons. There were discrepancies in her project timelines and budget allocations that didn't add up. During our one-on-one -on -one meetings, I addressed them head-on. Vanessa, I've noticed some discrepancies in the Smith account. Can you walk me through your process here? Sure, I mean, it's probably just minor oversights. You know how it goes with deadlines and all, 
she laughed nervously, fidgeting with her pen. Minor or not, accuracy is crucial. We can't afford these slips, especially with high-profile clients. Let's go over this together, shall we? My tone was firm, leaving no room for excuses. Yes, absolutely, she replied, her fingers trembling slightly as she tapped on her keyboard. It quickly became clear that Vanessa had been cutting corners, her work just barely skimming acceptable standards. Each session with her revealed more gaps, and I documented everything meticulously, preparing for the inevitable. Vanessa, based on these reviews, I see a pattern of oversight that we need to correct immediately, I stated during our next meeting, laying out the discrepancies. I understand, Julia. I'll tighten things up. Thanks for pointing these out, she replied, her voice a mix of gratitude and discomfort. I nodded. Let's ensure it doesn't continue. Our clients and our team rely on our diligence. As she left my office, the weight of her situation seemed to settle on her shoulders. For me, it was about protecting the integrity of our work, but I couldn't deny the faintest twinge of satisfaction knowing that in its own way, justice was being served. The following Monday, I arrived early, feeling the heightened stakes, not just for me, but for Vanessa too. I could sense the pressure on her as she approached my office, clutching her oversized designer bag in a stack of files, her heels clicking against the polished floor. Got a minute, I beckoned her in, my tone purposeful. Sure thing, she replied, smoothing her blouse as she sat down. I'm putting you in charge of the Henderson project. It's small but crucial. Think of this as an opportunity to really showcase your skills. Explained, laying out the project details in front of her. Venus's eyes flicked up, a mix of nervousness and excitement dancing in them. Really? I mean, thanks, Julia. I won't let you down. I nodded, watching her closely. I'll be guiding you through it, but I want to see what you can do when you're leading. As the days rolled on, I kept a close watch on Vanessa's handling of the project. Meetings were frequent, and I made sure every decision and approval was documented. Her initial enthusiasm began to wane as the pressure mounted. Vanessa, during our last review, you mentioned outsourcing some of the graphics work. Have you vetted the vendor properly? I asked her in one of our strategy sessions. Oh yeah, they're good. I mean, I think they'll be fine, she replied, a bit too hastily. It's crucial they're more than just fine. Can you share the vetting process you followed? I press, my voice firm, knowing that any misstep now would be on record. She fumbled through her files, her facade of confidence slipping. I'll get that info to you by EOD. Just, didn't bring the paperwork with me right now. Days turned into weeks, and the project's deadline loomed. We were in a team meeting, and it was Vanessa's turn to present her progress. The room was full, the air thick with anticipation. Vanessa stood, report in hand, but her usual poise was gone. All right, let's see. For the marketing strategy, we're, uh, we're planning to. She stumbled over her words, her report lacking the depth and clarity expected. From the corner, Mr. Carter raised his eyebrows and gave me a slight nod. This was the moment. As she floundered, I interjected. Vanessa, could you elaborate on how the budget was allocated? There seemed to be some discrepancies between your report and the initial estimates. Her face flushed. Well, I had to make some last-minute changes. The costs, uh, they kind of got away from me. I see. It's crucial we stick to the planned budgets, especially with new clients, I remarked, turning to the team. It's important we all learn from this. The meeting ended with the team shuffling out, murmurs of concern about the project status filling the room. Vanessa lingered, her defeat almost palpable. Julia, I, I tried to handle it. I don't know what went wrong, she confessed, her voice low. Managing projects is about oversight and adaptability, Vanessa. Let's discuss how we can rectify this, I said my tone firm but not unkind. This moment wasn't just about her failure. It was about setting a standard for everyone. She nodded, agreeing to meet later. I documented everything meticulously. Her mismanagement was now evident to everyone, and though I took no pleasure in her struggle, I knew it was necessary to safeguard the company and its clients. This was just as served, not out of vengeance, but out of necessity. The day after the disastrous meeting, the office was eerily quiet as I made my way to my desk. The whispers had already begun, trailing behind me like a shadow. Vanessa, pacing by the water cooler, intercepted me before I could even sit down. This was a setup, wasn't it? You've been out to get me from the start, she accused, her voice tense, strained with anger and confusion. 
I gave you an opportunity, Vanessa. The outcome was in your hands, not mine. I responded, calm and measured against her rising pitch. But you watched me fail. You could have helped more, guided me. Vanessa's voice cracked, her desperation clear in her eyes. Helping is one thing, but doing your job for you is another, I replied calmly. We all have to meet our standards, and unfortunately, you didn't meet yours. She scoffed, throwing her hands up. So that's it, huh? You're just going to watch me go down? I document everyone's performance, Vanessa. It's not personal. It's my job. Later that afternoon, Mr. Carter called us both into his office. The atmosphere was thick, almost suffocating, as Vanessa and I sat across from him. He laid out the papers I had compiled, her mismanaged budgets, unvetted vendors, and timeline discrepancies. After reviewing the evidence and considering Julia's observations, we decided it's best for the company that we part ways with you, Vanessa, Mr. Carter said. Her face went pale, her previous fire extinguished by the weight of the decision. I understand, was all she could manage, her voice barely a whisper. News of Vanessa's termination spread quickly. At the next family gathering, the mood was mixed. My brother Ethan approached me as I poured myself a cup of coffee. I know it's been rough, Jules. Are you okay? His concern was genuine, and I was touched. I did what was necessary, Ethan. It wasn't about revenge. It was about integrity. He nodded, clacking a hand on my shoulder. I know, sis, and I think, deep down, everyone else knows too. Our parents, ever supportive, made no comment on Vanessa's absence, choosing instead to focus on the family being together. As the night wore on, the heaviness lifted somewhat, laughter and chatter filling the space between us. Driving home later, the quiet hum of my reliable old car gave me a moment to reflect. Sitting in the driver's seat, watching the streetlights blur past, I thought about everything that had happened. My job demanded tough choices, ones that affected not just me but the people around me. While I never sought to hurt Vanessa personally, my role was clear, to uphold a standard. Ensuring justice at work meant making hard decisions even if they impacted family. And though the weight of those decisions was heavy, I drove on, knowing I had done my job with fairness and integrity. The road ahead was clear, guided by the principles I valued most. So, what do you think? Was Julia right in how she handled Vanessa's situation, strictly upholding her professional duties? Or could she have been more supportive despite their past issues? Share your thoughts in the comments below.